Hi Whovians, Harry here, and this week has basically been a massive news drop for Doctor Who. We've had news from the 60th anniversary, we've got news of Series 14, we had news about the festive special of 2023, and we also had news of stuff outside of the Doctor Who TV show, and it is just insane. This week has been crazy for Doctor Who news. And apologies that I wasn't able to get this video out sooner for you guys, but I have been away um, on my job and I've literally not had my computer to record on, um, so I couldn't um, get the video out any sooner for you guys. But it saved me from doing lots of short little videos to do a bigger video for you guys with all the news that has been released this week. And for the Pokemon fans of my videos, I should have a video about Pokemon coming out tomorrow um, on the day that you're watching this video. But before we get into this video, don't forget to subscribe, also leave a like and comment down below, and let's get in to the video. So let's go in chronological order with the first bit of news that dropped. And that is that Shooty Gawa and Millie Gibson have been seen in 60s era costumes, and Doctor Who actually uh, posted on their Twitter account um, pictures of Shooty Gatwa and Millie Gibson um, in more higher resolution um, footage of their costumes, and they look like fashion models in the pictures. I don't know too much about fashion, especially 60s era fashion, but they look like fashion models and they look like giving it all these fashion poses and they just look so cool. And there are links that I've seen um, between Shooty and Millie's costume, especially links to the 10th Doctor's costume and Rose Tyler's costume in The Idiot's Lantern. Now, if you don't know what The Idiot's Lantern is, that is an episode that took place around the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II. That was um, in June 1953, and it kind of took place over a couple of days, actually ending on the day that the Queen had a coronation. And I just think the similarities are quite similar between the 15th Doctor and his companion and the 10th Doctor and his companion. So let's start with the similarities between the Doctors. So both Shooty Gatwa's 15th Doctor and the 10th Doctor, of course, played by David Tennant, they are both wearing a pinstripe suit. Of course, this is what the 10th Doctor wore as his clothes, like, throughout his series. He, his regular clothing was a pinstripe suit. But this is a new costume for Shooty Gatwa, and it is actually his third costume, his third different costume, which makes it the most amount of costumes a Doctor has ever had. Normally they just have little tweaks and variations on their normal costume, but this is a completely different costume than his reveal outfit and his other outfit that we've seen him um, obviously being filmed in. And the suit isn't the only similar thing about the 15th Doctor and the 10th Doctor's appearance. In one of the pictures, I spotted that Shooty Gatwa has sideburns, of course very much like the 10th Doctor David Tennant. His Doctor had sideburns. And I just think that the similarities between Shooty's 15th Doctor and the 10th Doctor is really obvious in these pictures. However, that is not the only thing that is similar. Of course, there are similarities between Millie Gibson and Rose Tyler, of course, played by Billy Piper. I mean, just take, for example, their hairstyle. I mean, Rose's hair is a bit longer than Ruby Sunday's, but I think that is because Billy Piper's hair was longer than Millie Gibson's at the time that, of course, Rose Tyler recorded The Idiot's Lantern and Millie Gibson has been seen filming this episode that is going to be set in the 60s. And it doesn't stop there with similarities between Rose Tyler and Millie Gibson's Ruby Sunday. They also have similar looking earrings, as well as a similar dress type thing from that specific era. Of course, Rose Tyler's dress being from like the 50s era and Millie Gibson's dress being from like the 60s era. And I just think there's a lot of similarities between the 15th Doctor and Ruby Sunday to the 10th Doctor and his companion Rose Tyler. And I really wanted to mention The Idiot's Lantern because there was a cover of The Idiot's Lantern in this week's Doctor Who magazine. This cover, though, was for the coronation of King Charles III, of course, as that is coming up next month, um, which is actually um, just a couple of days away now. And, of course, The Idiot's Lantern 
took place at the time of the last coronation we ever had, which was uh, Charles III's mum, of course, Elizabeth II. That was her coronation that took place on the 2nd of June, 1953, which is when the Idiot's Lantern story took place. However, I just hope with all these similarities, it's not going to be just like the first era of Russell T Davis. However, there are also comparisons going beyond the Tenth Doctor as well. There are comparisons between Shuti Gatwa and Peter Capaldi, who of course played the Twelfth Doctor. The comparisons are that Shuti's hair is now in an afro uh, kind of hairstyle, so it is a lot longer than what we've seen his hair in before. And this is obviously just like the Twelfth Doctor, because he started with a short haircut, but it grew longer over his free series, becoming quite long hair actually. So maybe Shu Chi's doctor will follow a similar thing where his hair grows longer and longer over his series. And the comparisons between the 12th doctor and Shu Chi's 15th doctor don't just stop there. There is also another comparison where we see Shooty looking at himself in a car mirror and it is a bit like how the 12th Doctor looked at himself in deep breath and the girl who died when he was trying to think why he had this face, why he could remember seeing this face before and it is reminding him that of course he was the Doctor and he saves people. I know where I got this face and I know what it's for. Okay, what's it for? To remind me. To hold me to the mark. I'm the doctor. And I save people. And if anyone happens to be listening, and you've got any kind of a problem with that, to hell with you! But Shooty could be in a similar position where his doctor, actually we've seen Shooty, not as the doctor in the 60th anniversary, but as a normal person that David Tennant's 14th Doctor saves and chooses Shooty's face as his next incarnation of the Doctor to remember to be a good person, be kind and save as many people as you can. And that's not just it for little Easter eggs and details in the pictures that were released um, of Shooty Gatwa and Millie Gibson in their 60s era costumes. There was also um, seen in the background one photo that where there was a piano and that led many fans to go on to think about the villain that is confirmed to be in series 14, a piano themed villain, Jinx Monsoon. Now, if you don't know who Jinx Monsoon is, they are a very um, well-known drag queen and she is um, reportedly playing a big villain in series 14. Actually, she is, quote, playing the Doctor's most powerful enemy yet. And no disrespect to Jinx Monsoon, but that is a big claim. The most powerful enemy of the Doctor's yet? That is a big thing to state that she is the most powerful enemy yet, better than the Master, the Daleks, the Cybermen, and putting her front and centre as the Doctor's most powerful enemy yet, it brings a lot that people will desire when they see her character, and she doesn't seem to have like a series finale type vibe to her villain. Yeah, she is very intimidating and costumes are so cool, but I wouldn't really describe her as the Doctor's the most powerful enemy yet, but that remains to be seen. Of course, when we undoubtedly get her episode, and I mean, I trust in Russell T. Davis and that team. So if they say that she's the Doctor's most powerful enemy yet, I'd be inclined to believe them. But just a really cool costume either way. And of course, it being really piano themed, it could have tied back as a little hint into that piano when they were seen in their 60s era costumes, of course, Shuji Gatwa and Millie Gibson. And that's not it for film menus. We soon got after that, that Bristol was getting redecorated in a festive way again. So of course, this is for Shuji to film his scenes for the 2023 Christmas special. And we know it's for Shuti because he's been seen filmed in Bristol. Of course, Doctor Who filming locations, they put out all the pictures of him filming. And he's in his, not his 60s era costume or his reveal outfit, his other costume. So of course, that seems like his more go-to costume. So maybe that will be his more regular costume, but it'll just change costumes a lot more than previous Doctors. 
And this is for the 2023 Christmas special because Bristol is in getting decorated in a festive way. It looks extremely festive. And um, of course, Millie Gibson has already filmed her scenes for the 2023 Christmas special. So we know it's for the Christmas special uh, coming out at the end of this year. And Shooty just looks amazing. He is filming with the TARDIS. He is filming with regular cast that is set to be where he picks up Ruby Sunday from. And um, it just looks amazing. Of course, he looks amazing. He looks very Doctor-like. And we haven't even seen an episode of him yet. But if he looks Doctor-like now, I can't wait to see his um, episodes. However, moving backwards now to maybe something that we'll get in November, Georgia Tennant posted on her Instagram story David Tennant in his 14th Doctor costume with a bit of birthday cake. Of course, this was for his birthday. And um, of course, Georgia Tennant is, of course, the wife of David Tennant. And um, this just is a little fun thing because she did say that he dresses like this for every birthday that she added on just to not cause fan speculation to go wild, which it was. However, he is at a studio that you can see in the background. So if he was just dressing up like the 14th Doctor that he does for every birthday, why would he be at a studio specifically with the Doctor hairstyle? He has the Doctor hairstyle and he is at a studio. So it could be very possible that he is doing reshoots for the 60th anniversary. And this very gets more weight added to it when David Tennant recorded a video wishing Murtha RFC under 12s and under 14s good luck in their finals weekend. And he had the doctor hairstyle and he was wishing luck to a Welsh team. I mean, just putting two and two together, it makes it seem like David Tennant is doing reshoots for the Doctor Who 60th anniversary. Again, this could be wrong. But it looks very possible that this is for Doctor Who, the 60th anniversary. And if this reshoots this far into the process, it must factor into the story big time. So that makes me even more hyped for the 60th anniversary, and I can't wait. And another bit of news, just as unexpected as reshoots, is that Murray Gold is returning as composer. Now, if you don't know who Murray Gold is, Murray Gold was the Doctor Who composer from 2005 all the way to 2017. And that is insane. He has been there from since the revival all the way through to the end of the Moffat era. And really, we only had one Doctor in between his time when he stepped away from Doctor Who as composer. And now he's already back only after six years. We thought it was quick for Russell T Davis to come back after 13 years. But Murray Gold is already returning after six years. But I mean for the 60th anniversary, could it really be anyone else? It would have been cool to see someone else. But Murray Gold is just so iconic and his scores are just so amazing and iconic with Doctor Who. And with the return of Murray Gold, people have asked if we'll get the release of the Series 10 soundtrack. Now, if you don't know, Series 10 was the final season of The Twelfth Doctor, and that was the only soundtrack that Murray Gold didn't release. And it still hasn't been released to this day. However, Murray Gold did tweet out that there was going to be a release of the Series 10 soundtrack eventually. So not only are we getting more new scores from Murray Gold, we are also getting the release of the Series 10 soundtrack, something that people have waited for for six years. And the next bit of news is just some small little things that don't really tie into anything major, but they're just cool little things to mention. So first off, we have Freema Adjaman and Sophie Aldred them in a photo together, looking very friendly with each other and just looking like best friends really. And if you don't know who they are, Freema Adjaman played Martha Jones, of course, companion to the 10th Doctor, and Sophie Aldred played Ace, companion to the 7th Doctor, and she recently appeared in The Power of the Doctor as well. And they just look like, they just look like best friends with each other, just doing some fun poses together. Both of them were at Armageddon Expo, and this is why they were together, and of course, being friends, working in Doctor Who, they decided to take a photo together. And it could be a big hint that they are both going to be in the Rumoured Unit spin-off. Of course, Martha Jones appeared in the Torchwood spin-off and also she actually did work for Unit in Doctor Who before being revealed that she was going freelance um, at the end of Series 4. 
And Ace recently worked with Unit, of course, in The Power of the Doctor, working closely with Kate Stewart and her team at Unit. So it would just be really cool to see both of these characters in the rumoured Unit spin-off. And speaking of spin-offs, Titan Comics revealed that they are launching a two-issue um, comic on July the 5th for Doomsday. This being Doom's debut. Now, if you don't know what Doomsday is, it is the multi-platform Doctor Who story celebrating Doctor Who's 60th anniversary, where Doom is the main character and she is the universe's greatest assassin. However, she is going to die in 24 hours if she can't find the Doctor. And it is going to be throughout comics, novels, um, TV is just amazing. She is going to be popping up from the 5th of July all the way till um, November this year. And it is going to be amazing just to see her back. So Doctor Who collectors, note down July 5th of this year because that is when Titan Comics are launching the first two issues of Doomsday. And sticking with comics, the 14th Doctor comic strip in this week's Doctor Who magazine saw the destruction of the 13th Doctor's sonic screwdriver. Of course, in the comics we've seen that David Tennant regenerated from Jodie Whittaker into the 14th Doctor, and of course um, he doesn't seem to have any post-regeneration madness like most other Doctors do when they regenerate, and he's been using her sonic screwdriver recently, However, we did see in early leaked images of the 60th anniversary that he was using a different version of the Sonic screwdriver than 13 Sonic. And we figured, well, how is he going, how are they going to transition? And this week, in this week's issue of the Doctor Who magazine in that comic strip, we finally saw the destruction of 13 Sonic. I know it's just a small thing, but just goes a lot, a long way to establish continuity. And that's not all. The Radio Times also did an interview about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 with Karen Gillan, who of course played Amy Pond um, in the Doctor Who universe, but, but of course plays Nebula in the MCU, which is of course where the Guardians of the Galaxy take place. And she was just in an interview with her co-star, but of course the interview steered the interview to talk about Karen Gillan perhaps returning as Amy Pond in the Doctor Who 60th anniversary. And this is actually what Karen Gillan had to say about it. I mean, yeah, it's always nice when people appreciate anything that you've done. Um, but no, it's it's cool um, to see that people are still intrigued by Amy Pond and whether she could return. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. So the thing is, she's not saying no, but she's also being very sneaky at avoiding the question. So... Could she be in the Doctor Who 60th anniversary? David Tennant has said that there are many cameos that we haven't even seen yet. So a return for Amy Pond in the 60th anniversary, it could be on the table for her. And also the last bit of news that literally just dropped the other day is that there is a Blue Peter competition where the competitors have to draw fan art and the winner will get an official tour of the Doctor Who set. And just like David Tennant, if I was aged between 5 and 15, I would be entering. Of course, you have to be aged between 5 and 15 to enter the competition. It ends Monday the 15th of May at 5pm and all the details on how to enter are on the Blue Peter website. So go check that out if you are aged between 5 and 15 because... You will be one of the first people to see the Doctor Who set, um, other than, of course, the Doctor Who cast and crew. But that would be amazing to say that you've seen the official Doctor Who set of the Doctor Who 60th anniversary before anyone else that isn't part of the Doctor Who cast and crew. It is amazing. And of course, David Tennant was the one advertising it on Blue Peter in a video form advertising this competition. However, the video was filled with a lot of Doctor Who Easter eggs and details. So even people who aren't aged between 5 and 15, as well as including that age group, can have a bit of fun at seeing all these Easter eggs. Of course, the first Easter egg I spotted was that David Tennant says, Don't blink. Don't even blink. And of course, that is a reference to the episode Blink, where he said the exact same thing when he warned Sally Sparrow and Larry Nightingale about the Weeping Angels. Don't blink. Don't even blink. Blink and you're dead. And to actually 
some another detail is that he says this of course in video form in the episode blink and he is also in video form when he is telling us about this blue peter competition so he is in video form while saying don't blink don't even blink in the episode blink but also while he's on this episode of blue peter and the other detail I spotted was that David Tennant ends this video by saying his Doctor's catchphrase, Allons-y. Of course, the 10th Doctor and now the 14th Doctor's catchphrase, of course, being Allons-y. He says that a lot. Allons-y! But it gave me really Crispy Pro vibes. If you don't know who Crispy Pro is, you probably know him if you're watching my videos. But he is an Australian Doctor Who YouTuber, and he is amazing. And he ends all his videos with the 10th Doctor's catchphrase. Then, Allons-y! And David Tennant ended this um, Doctor Who competition video by saying Alan Z, And it just felt really much like Crispy Pro, even though Crispy Pro copies David Tennant's Doctor's catchphrase. And it's just like, so, seems so meta, even if it wasn't on purpose, by David Tennant and Blue Peter and the BBC. Anyway, I hope you kept with me for all this news. I know there was a lot of it, and I'm sorry for that, but at least I could get out one full video for you guys with all this information about it. And let me know down in the comments below if, you, if you're excited about all this information. What are you most excited? And also, what kind of videos will you want me to cover related to Doctor Who and Pokemon in the future? And also, if you like this episode, don't forget to leave a like. Also subscribe and share it out, and I will see you in the next one.